Good morning. It's a wonderfully warm Sunday morning, second week in June, and I've wandered out into the garden, and as you can see, I'm still in my pyjamas, and I thought I'd grab the camera and give you a quick update and guided tour of the wildlife pond, which we put in last summer during lockdown, because it's become everything I dreamed of, and in fact, everything I designed. So let me show you a few of the features. This post here indicates where the pond line finishes. So all this area here, which appears to be solid ground, is actually a bog garden. And there's around eight to 10 inches of soil. And in that soil, I've planted forget-me-nots, hostas, irises. The buttercups have found their own way there. There is also water mint. And at the far back corner there, is one of the two gunneras. And there are two gunneras because I started off with one and split it using the spade. And it seemed really quite dramatic at the time. And I was wondering whether they would actually survive, but they did survive. Nature is a wonderful, powerful force. It can survive a lot of things. So I have a gunnera there and a gunnera set back in the corner and they're already producing wonderful big leaves. At the back, there is a laurel hedge which has been invaded by nettles. And I don't have a problem with nettles because they are great for wildlife. It's the perfect environment for butterflies and moths to lay eggs. Those eggs hatch into caterpillars and they are the start of the food chain, which encourages birds and frogs and other types of animals into the garden. I use some old logs to surround the edge of the pond, which gives it a very natural feel and hides the pond liner and I backfilled it with soil so that most of the plants which are in that soil border are moisture loving plants. In between the two gunneras which are in the corners I have some arum lilies and they're just peeping up and starting to show their blooms in and amongst the nettles. Buried away behind the second gunnera in and amongst those nettles is the log pile and you can watch my log pile vlog. But that was to provide a wonderful set of habitats for all the lovely wildlife. And at the far back behind the log pile is a mound of earth, which used to be a compost heap. And thrown on top of that mound of earth, are a lot of branches and twigs and small logs, which I've cupped from various trees around the garden in the last 12 months. Again, it's providing additional habitats for all the different types of wildlife. And it's providing a whole ecosystem. So I've got real biodiversity in this wilded corner of the garden. The bulrush, which is sat in the water, was borrowed from the formal fish pond. And that in itself provides an environment because those stalks which come up out of the water provide a landing pad for things like dragonflies. And they land on those and they crawl down to the water and they dip their tails in and they lay their eggs. And those eggs in the water hatch into larva, which spend a few months in there growing. And then they use the same bulrush to emerge. And so the cycle continues. Let me get up and show you some more. I found these two old boulders buried in the soil next to my front gates and I've used those to kind of hold the pond liner back on this front edge and I've noticed many birds come and land on those and dip their beaks into the water for a drink. The oxygenating pond weeds beneath the water surface have really started to take over so I'm probably going to have to thin that out and this green surface plant which I think is called duckweed has also become quite invasive. And I didn't even put that in there, so I don't know where that's come from. Possibly arrived on another plant or even on a bird's foot. Again, nature has a way of finding its way to other places. So I will probably have to take some of that out as well because I do want some clear water surface. The lilies, which I divided from the formal fish pond, have also started to show their faces. And if I peer through into the depths, I can see the flower buds reaching up for the water's surface. And soon enough, they will be beautiful blooms scattered around and I'll give you another update and show you those 
in the near future. This is water forget-me-not. We also have brook lime and over there in the far corners I have some water mint. And these are plants which are recommended for wildlife ponds because newts come in and lay their eggs and curl the leaves around their eggs. Now I haven't seen any newts or frogs or any other amphibians yet but it's only 12 months old and you've got to be patient. But what I have seen is dozens of species of birds coming down to use this as a drinking place and the air is full of insects and underneath the water's surface I can see dozens of other species of pond life which seems miraculously to have found its way here from the fields around all because I provided this little micro ecosystem and it's amazing what having a small amount of water in the garden will bring at the back is a wall of metals and a lot of people might say get some weed killer on it but I love it because it's a secret private environment where nobody ever goes where the wildlife can flourish and thrive down in this corner I have a shallow end if you like and a rocky beach that's there for one reason let's say a rabbit or a hedgehog were to tumble into the water there's an escape route for it there it might also act as a way in for frogs and newts and toads on a hot sunny day when they need some moisture the pond liner does extend into the corner so that all that soil is based in water so that the plants on there have got their roots touching the water's surface below and the bark of these logs which provides a retaining wall for that soil is a further different type of environment and as it rots down lots of different insects and fungi and invertebrates and bacteria will start to inhabit and you have true biodiversity and you're providing something for every level of the food chain now some gardeners will look at this and think it's a complete mess and in fact it is a mess but it's designed to be a mess certain areas of my garden are very formal and very controlled but you have to ask yourself is that good for wildlife well it might be good for certain types of wildlife but this is providing for the other end of that spectrum and apart from coming down here and observing it from a distance I intend to do very little in terms of maintenance or interfering with nature and again as I look across the water's surface I can see dozens of flies hovering and moving around and dipping in to the water it's alive with different creatures so there we are an update on my 12 month old wildlife pond I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please do like share subscribe and hit the notifications bell and also please comment below have you got a wildlife pond what does it look like what do you like about it I'd love to hear from you I'll see you soon mm -hmm.